Hello. Hi everybody. Thank you very much to coming, for coming to Digital Davos uh, from this uh, afternoon for a couple of hours. We are taking over uh, Digital Davos to bring you a brand new series called Pathfinder. It sounds a little bit like Pathfinder, but we spell it differently, Pathfinder. So if you are tweeting, hashtagging, and uh, Facebooking, Instagramming, use Pathfinder, one word, and we'll, uh, uh, we'd love to see your pictures and video and, and stuff like that. To introduce myself briefly, my name is Mike Butcher. I'm the editor-at-large for TechCrunch. Anyone heard of TechCrunch? Yes. You're in the right place. Uh, and uh, I'm also now co-creator of Pathfinder Sessions, which will be launching soon in London. This is our sort of beta launch here at Davos. And uh, it's going to be, uh, Pathfinder is going to be about sustainable tech, impact tech, innovation around the global goals and those kinds of subjects. And so that's what we wanted to do for you today, was to bring that together. And the overarching theme of this is really to talk about uh, the impact of technology as is starting to be you know, evidenced uh, by the interaction between humans, machine, humans and machines, um, AI and humans, and, and there's a, no better example of this than uh, at the partner that we have for you today, Builder AI, who have developed a very, very sophisticated platform to, to uh, really reimagine uh, the uh, technology industry in a way that it, will, it can work for remote workers, for uh, people who want to create new kinds of applications very easily. And uh, so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Sachin uh, Dev Dugal, who is the CEO and, co and founder of Builder, and he'll tell you a little bit about what Builder is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to stand on here so that the demo does all the viewing and not, not so much me. But <clears throat> firstly, hi, I'm Sachin, and I'm an engineer. But I realize that being an engineer gives you a slightly different view of the world. But even for me, I realize that building software is actually very difficult. You've got to think about the spec. You've got to think, oops, there we are. You've got to think about the spec. You've got to think about where you're going to find an engineer or a dev shop or a consultant. And you know, actually, when we started out, we were building a photo sharing app. And then we worked with an outsource developer, and we, it did not go so well. We realized if it's so difficult for us, it must be so much harder for everyone else. And so when we thought about our friends who were not engineers and not product people, not in tech, we realized that actually if building technology for tech people is so difficult, building technology for people that are not in tech is an order of magnitude more complicated. And now you think about the world, uh, there used to be the digital economy and the traditional economy. And you know, the digital economy was a little thing about e-commerce and it was nice to have but not, not, not relevant for everyone. If we think about the next 10 years or even now, the two have merged. There is only one economy and it is digitally empowered. So the idea of folks not being able to build or interact with technology is a problem. And so we've created this platform that all you need is an idea. Uh, and Everything from building it, supporting it, running it, is done in a single platform. Think of the dev shop reimagined, but from the ground up. So I'm going to show you a demo, because I think demos just are so much better than me talking for hours. Uh, how many people have had a friend that have had an idea? How many of you um, use Facebook? How many of you received a push notification? Quite a few people. So we all know folks that have ideas, that don't understand technology. We've all received Facebook notifications or other notifications. So I ask myself, why is it that we rewrite the same bit of code again and again? Why is it that every single time you want to build a login, you've got to go pay two and a half thousand dollars to have someone build it? And so if we start with ours, we say we want to build an app. A lot of our friends will say, let's switch to US dollars. We say, I want to build an app and it's like Uber. This actually is our most frequently used template. I want to build an app like Uber. At this point, you would probably spend the next four weeks thinking about what an, your app might have, the features it needs to have. Our platform's actually telling you straight away. An app like Uber has these 36 features. And what you'll notice is it has a feature called Time Tracker. Time Tracker costs $600. Time Tracker probably costs us four or $5,000. 
but we're splitting the cost of common features across a large number of customers. And you've got to hold that thought because that's a really important part of what we're doing. We're taking what is a consulting practice and converting it into a factory process, which is most software is actually reusable code. There's only about 20 to 30% that's unique. And what we found is that 80% of most applications are based on 20% um, of our feature library, which is quite fascinating. Everyone thinks their idea is so unique, but really the uniqueness is the last 20 to 30%. So you'll see here there's a price, so it's $24,000. If I got rid of Time Tracker, price will drop, it's $23,000. And so you can add and remove features, you can spec your app, and the system is gonna start suggesting. And when you have ideas, and especially for your colleagues or your friends that are not really quite technical, they don't know how to do a spec document, they're visual, so they've seen screenshots. But what if they could get a prototype in a couple of minutes? And so the idea that you can get social proof, the idea that um, you're able to show it to your boss, that you're able to show it to an investor, and you didn't have to spend any money. And this is really the, the pin drop moment. We've got to a prototype of an app like Uber, and we just spent two minutes. And you're able to show it to people, you can validate an idea, you can validate a flow. You can even say, I wonder how everything would work. How would it lay out? How would it look and feel? And you're seeing in real time, our platform is creating a prototype, showing you the screens, showing you how they connect. Enough for you to do social proof. So whereas in the traditional world, you would have spent probably eight weeks getting to this point. On a very simple app, well not a very simple app, 36 feature app, we've managed to get there in under five minutes. And so if we go forward, you say, okay, let's plan delivery. Many times, you know, you might want to do an MVP, you might want to do something really quickly, really fast. Um, really quickly and really fast, and other times you might want to constrain budget. There's never been a simple trade-off. If I said I want to make this project faster, $65,000, but the time is a lot less. And you have the ability to keep adjusting time. So this is all about taking that idea, having someone who doesn't understand technology, giving them a way to sort of, you know, feel their idea, get social proof, get approval, but then we have to build it. And so what we've built is a platform that's using this library of reusable features. Um, there's an assembly line, just like car manufacturing. Um, and, and then you have 142 dev shops around the world that we're buying the excess human capacity from. So here's an example of one of our dev shops. And you'll see in this dev shop, it has six people. It's an average, you know, small, medium-sized consulting company. And there's a chap called Richard Peterson. has two skills. He has... Ruby on Rails, yes, Angular, we've started scoring talent. So one of the most important things in the platform is we're actually taking all the bits of things that make up software development, features, spec, um, development, creators, designers. We're bringing them into a single platform and then the machines are running the project. And so here's a really good example. So you come into billing, you've got a rate card, the dev shop can set a price. So here we have an Android developer. Is uh, one person that's added to this. Uh, the dev shops are now setting a spot price. You know what? I've got tons of capacity this month. I'm going to reduce the price. And we will use up that capacity to deploy to a project. Or actually, I've got my own customers that are using it. I'm going to increase the price. And then all the way through our system is suggesting to them that you have this capacity on your bench. You have these people that are working for you. This is the best way to utilize them. And then when it really comes together is this, is the brain. Which is bringing together people, features, understanding timelines. Um, and this is really powerful because at this point we've been able to shave about half the time that it would take to build software. And we haven't even touched code. All we've done is taken reusable features, we've removed all the laborious human work that happens. And when you think about the future of work, when you think about more and more people building software, it's an exponential number of people, SMEs, dreamers, entrepreneurs that are trying to build ideas and you just don't have the same amount of supply. So you have to do something to the workload to be able to let it scale. Um, and then one of the other pieces of our jigsaw, which I think I really want to talk you through because this is the future of the platform, and because this is my session, we're, we're sort of doing a, a world first, is I'm going to show you an app being built um, with no human involvement. So here we have, you know, we're, we're, go we're going through, we're choosing a template, we're going to call it Uber App 2, just to make it simple. It's a very simple version. We're only going to add three or four features. Um, and we're going to hit start. 
obviously it's like Uber. So we go forward. And, um, and then what you're going to see is the features we're adding. So we're adding login. You'll see the price goes up. We're going to add uh, map view, account creation, basic features that software would need. And what you'll notice when we have maps. So then we hit, uh, we hit go. We get there eventually. Uh, you choose your speed. Uh, you choose the features you want. We name the template so you have a, a distinct name for your app. And as we go forward, now what's going to happen is, is what's happening is the magic in the background. So we're, we're going to be shipping this um, in the middle of the summer. But here you'll see our back end. It started to actually say, oh, an app like this has these features. Here's the code that I can reuse. You're going to start seeing our design, uh, our, all the back end, which is bringing together frequent code. No human's been involved yet. And now you'll see it's starting to process, finding out reusable code, reusable design, <laughs> trying to see the right developers to use. Takes a couple of minutes even for a machine to build software. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, and so in a couple of minutes, what will happen is uh, a repository will get created. See, the software, the application is built. And um, then you get to our brain. And the brain says, OK, I've done all the bits that the machine needed to do. I need three developers to work on this software. And it's coming through, and it's suggesting people. It's suggesting one person from the Dominican Republic. It's suggesting one person from Belize. And you add these people, the developers get invited. These are not people that work for us. They work for dev shops around the world. They just happen to be free. And the system has found them to be free. So if you imagine it's like Uber drivers and you have the opposite of search pricing. People are sitting free, ready to take you somewhere. The developer gets an email. says you've been invited to this project. They open the project. And suddenly they're in a development environment with all the code pre-written. At this point, to get to this point in a traditional development environment, you would be at week 14 to week 16. We've got here in two minutes. And to show you the power of how it really starts to come together and all the technology that we have built, you really can't see otherwise. Let's open up um, one of the files. So we're going to open up the map view. I'm going to show you what the map view looks like. I'm going to show you the map view working. So we edit the code. These are all the areas where we're very clear what developers can touch, what they can't touch. So there's a lot of you know, high quality so they don't mess around with the environment. Here we have NTO location. We're going to change it to hello world. Oh, sorry, hello everyone. Uh, and you're going to enter your location and instantly you see it's working. No developer involved and we've built an application that can show a map, find a location and it spins up. All from fundamental building blocks. This is really powerful because our dream is that over the course of the next year, we'll bring down what is taking even 10 to 12 weeks today and make it under seven days. So imagine that friend you had that had an idea that can now actually have a built app in less than seven days. And so what's unique about this approach? The first part of this is that we realized that the software project as a concept was really just mind-blowing for people, it's just, just too big. And you could never compare them. And then, then you had to deal with man hours. And you had to deal with developers. And that's just too small a unit. We realized that if we said, OK, a project is really features. And we built a graph that takes together features and shows the relationship between them, it was really powerful. And to my point earlier, 20% of the features in our library, we have about 500 features, make up 80% of all projects. And so that allows us to spread the cost so we can make it cheaper. It allows us to use data every single time something's built to drive how it improves, reduce the cost. As I showed you earlier, what it also allows us to do is find relationships. If we can find out what features have an impact on what other features. If I built an app and the only thing it did was Facebook log it, it's super simple. But if I'm building an app for Pathfinder and it's much faster and it's got more features in it, there's a lot more complexity involved. And that really is where we're starting to see that combination of man and machine, human and machine, uh, bringing together. Okay, great, thank you. Ooh.